So you probably find it easy to see bet on the flop when you hit a strong hand, like top pair, top kicker, easy see bet. You flop a set, super easy see bet, or even a raise, right? But as you probably know, we don't hit top pair or better all that often, which means we have to bluff quite a bit. But for some of us, that's a really difficult thing for us to actually pull the trigger on a bluff. To help you do that, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to find the best flops to bluff on. Gambate! Yeah, this is big brain time. So when it comes to bluffing on the flop, in general, you can bluff on dry and hard to hit flops. Let's actually break that sentence down. First off, dry flops. What are they? Well, dry flops offer few drawing possibilities, and the winning hand is more likely already decided. Let's take, for example, ace of clubs, jack of clubs. That's what you hold, and the flop comes ace, nine, deuce, rainbow. You've got a very strong showdown worthy hand. You're very likely to win right now, assuming you don't face a ton of pushback on your opponent. Remember, you have the ace, jack on the ace, nine, deuce, rainbow. You've got top pair, good kicker right now, right? Pretty dry flop, good for your top pair hand. Let's contrast this with wet flops. Now, wet flops offer loads of drawing opportunities, and the winning hand is likely not decided yet. A really good example, you hold the same hand. You raised pre-flop, ace of clubs, jack of clubs, but the flop comes jack of spades, nine of spades, eight of hearts. This can be super disastrous for your top pair top kicker. Remember, you hold ace jack, but just imagine that board right now. Jack of spades, nine of spades, eight of hearts. You hold the ace jack. If that actually happened in game, your heart is going to start beating. You might start breathing heavy. You realize, oh man, top pair, top kicker. But this is a dangerous board for me because you don't have a redraw. I mean, I guess you have a redraw to a full house. <laughs> you know, jack and an ace on the river gives you jack full of aces. But truly, all you have is top pair, top kicker. Your opponents have so many drawing potentials uh, based on their pre-flop range. Now, like I said, you want to bluff on dry and hard to hit flops. So what are the hard to hit flops? Well, first off, they're the dry ones for sure. The second part of a hard to hit flop, we have to think about your opponent's range. If it's hard to hit, that means their range does not interact well with the flop. Let's look at another example. King, six, four, rainbow. Let's imagine you open raised preflop. You're up against a tight, small blind collar. So maybe you opened in the cutoff. Button folded. Small blind, tight player called. Big blind folded. Heads up. King 6-4 rainbow flop. So if you think about that flop right there, your opponent checks to you in the small blind. They do not have two pair possible. Remember, they're a tight, small blind collar. King 6-4 rainbow flop. They don't have king 6. They don't have king 4 in their range. They don't have 6-4 in their range either, not even 6-4 suited. Tight players do not call with those with the big blind player still to act. They can't have any two pair hands, right? They could have sets, a set of sixes and a set of fours, but they don't have a set of kings at least. There's one set removed from their range because they would have three bet you pre-flop with those. Now, they do have top pair hands, right? King 6-4, they could have called from the small blind with king queen, king jack suited, king 10 suited, but not much else, right? Their top pair hands are kind of limited right now. King 6-4 rainbow, they can't have the open ender because tight players in the small blind, they're not going to call with 5-7 or 3-5 to hit an open ender on the king 6-4, right? And because it's a rainbow board, flush draws aren't possible. Very dry board, this tight player's range doesn't interact well, this is a perfect spot to be c-bet bluffing them. All right, I got a little quiz for you. Here is your situation. You open raised in the cutoff. The button and the small blind both folded and a loose big blind player called. We can give them a wide 33% range. Let's remove queens are better and ace kink because we think they would have three bet them. The rest of the range, they have all the other broadways, suited and off suit, pocket pairs, jacks down through deuces, all the suited aces, all the off suit aces, they also have king deuce up through king nine suited, and they have some other suited connectors and gappers, five four suited and better, six four suited and better, 10 seven suited, jack seven suited, and queen seven suited and better. So here's the quiz for you. Which flop will you bluff on? A, ace nine deuce rainbow. 
B. Jack of Spades, Nine of Spades, Eight of Hearts. Or C. King, Six, Four, Rainbow. Pause the video. Remember, you're up against a loose big blind caller. He checked to you the flop hits. Which will you bluff on? Ace, Nine, Deuce, Rainbow. Jack, Nine, Eight with a flush draw. King, Six, Four, Rainbow. Pause the video. And down in, uh, in the comments below, if you want to help this channel grow, please leave a comment. Tell me which board or maybe boards you would bluff on right here against this loose big blind caller. And while you're at it, slap, slap that like button as well, please. Alrighty, so here's my answer. I would bluff on the King 6-4 rainbow board. Now here's why. On that King 6-4, this 33% calling range, it hits top pair or better, and the open-ended straight draws are better, only 17.8% of the time. That's less than 20%. That's less than one out of five. If I think my opponent can fold all other weaker hands and draws, what a great spot to be bluffing them. And if we think about our opponent's range, all the random aces and queens, and most of those pairs on the king 6-4, like pocket eights and pocket nines, they completely whiffed on the king 6-4 board. There's so many hands in this player's range that are folding. Now, if we think about draws, right? 7-5 on the king 6-4, that's the only open ender, and this opponent has 7-5 suited, so only four combos of an open end straight draw. If they have a 8-7 suited for a gut shot, well, that's only four more combos as well. And there's no flush draws possible because it's king, six, four, rainbow. So this is a great spot to be bluffing our opponent. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Sky, how do you know that this range hits top pair or better and the open ender just 17.8% of the time? Isn't that quite exact? And yes, you're absolutely right. It is exact. And I use a killer program to help me understand how ranges interact with flops. And that's called Flopzilla Pro. Let's get into that right now. Now, this is a really good time if you're listening to this or watching it on YouTube on your home computer where you have Flopzilla Pro installed. It's a great time to do as you consume and follow along with me within Flopzilla Pro. So the first thing that you want to do is use the group mode. So in the Flopzilla Pro window, click the uh, little filter icon, and that brings up a pie chart, which lets you see how well or in, in which different ways the range interacts with the board. So enter that, th that original 32.9% big blind callers range of 436 combos. There's a screenshot on the show notes page, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod415. Or of course you can see it if you're watching the video. Enter that in and then enter in that first flop, king six four, or not the first flop, the best flop, king six four rainbow. So on this board, we can see that our villain's range hits top pair or better and open into straight draws 17.8% of the time. That little pie chart shows us a big blue quadrant right here, or a section of the pie, 17.8%, and 82% is all in gray. This means if our opponent is capable of only, or sir, I should say, if our opponent only continues with top pair or better and open into straight draws, bam, they're folding 82% of the time. This is a great board to be bluffing on. But remember, we specifically said this is a loose big blind caller. They don't give up on flop so easily, right? So within Flopzilla Pro, choose the green filter right now. This is going to allow us to see how their range hits different strength hands. Let's put in green, pocket pair less than top card, and mid pair. So some of the weaker pairs. Let's also add gut shots with the green filter. Bam, you can see now that it's broken up. Our opponent is continuing 18% with the stronger top pair or better and the open ended but they're also continuing 14% with pocket pair less than top card like jacks through sevens and also mid pairs like ace six and six five. They're also continuing with gut shots like eight seven suited. Remember the board was king six four. They need a five for a gut shot. So they're continuing 14% with those weaker hands. Altogether, they're now continuing 32%, which means they're folding 68% of the time. More than two out of every, th or yes, more than two out of three parts of their range are folding right now. What a great spot to be bluffing them. Now, let's remove that flop. Let's add in the ace nine deuce rainbow board. On the ace nine deuce, our opponent is hitting top pair or better. And there's no draws really possible other than two card backdoor draws. So basically, top pair or better, and two pair and sets 
as well for a total hitting of 35%. Because they hit 35%, that means they're folding 65%. But let's imagine, remember, we got a fish on our hand, a loose player. Let's say they can call with mid pair or better and gut shots are better. Now they're calling 45% of the time, meaning they only fold about 55%. A less good, a less good, <laughs> a, a less profitable flop to be bluffing on for sure. The ace nine deuce versus the king six four rainbow. What about the most wet board? The wettest board that we talked about, the jack of spades nine of spades, eight of hearts board. Well, on this board, our opponent hits top pair or better and the open end of straight draw plus some flush draws 46% of the time, meaning they only fold 54%. This should be an eye opener for some of you right here. You don't think about board texture, but now you realize, holy cow, this super wet board, our opponent's range connects so well, they're folding way less often. But remember, they're a fishy player. They can continue with weaker pairs and mid pairs and gut shots as well. Whoa, this is terrible. Now they are continuing a total of 64% of the time. They're only folding 36%. This is not a good board to be C-bet bluffing on. So you can see how just a couple minutes of work with one range and three different boards ended up informing a little bit of our understanding of how ranges interacts with flops. And we already know two pretty decent flops that we should be bluffing on. The king six four rainbow, the ace nine deuce rainbow. But let's get to a little bit more practice for you. So here are three more ways that you can do some flop analysis. First off, you always have to enter your opponent's range, right? Now, in Flopzilla Pro, there's a random flops button. You can see right there at the bottom of the board section. Just click the random right here. Let's see what happens. Well, on just a random board of king, queen, jack, rainbow, all three Broadway cards, we can see that this player hits top pair or better and the open enders 42% of the time. Uh, because it's a rainbow, it doesn't hit that often. Let's make one quick, or I mean, it hits a decent amount at 42%. Um, and if they can continue with middle pair and even bottom pair, it hits way more frequently. They're continuing 46%, only folding 55. But let's make a change. I know we hit the random, but say, okay, this is a random king, queen, jack. What if a suited king, queen, jack? The king of hearts, queen of spades, jack of hearts for a potential flush draw. Okay, now with the flush draw added, now they're hitting 47%. They're only folding 53% of the time right here. A little bit more dangerous board to be bluffing this opponent on. Let's hit random once again. The ace, jack, six with two diamonds. Flush draw potential right here. Well, in this particular instance, they're hitting 44%. They're folding 56% of the time. Let's go again. Jack, seven, three. This is a great one right here. You can see the other two... Uh, boards that we just saw was like ace high and king high, right? This one's jack high. Well, our opponent really doesn't have many jacks in their hand, right? Not as many aces and kings uh, in their range. On the jack seven three with two spades, this one only hits 25% of the time. That's great. What if it was jack seven three rainbow? Woo! It only hits 17%. That means this player is potentially folding 83% of the time. This is a great way to analyze the various flops that can hit out of the tens of thousands of flops that can hit um, uh, against this one board right here. So that's the first way to study, using random flops. The second thing I like to do is I like to use actual flops. So you can see on the screen right over here, these are some flops that I just pulled a little screenshot from Poker Tracker 4. The first flop at the top is nine five deuce with two hearts. Okay, let's enter that in. Nine five deuce right here. On the nine five deuce, this player's range hits top pair or better and open enders 20% of the time. But if they can continue with mid pair or better plus the gut shots, ooh, it's 41% of the time. So I can expect my opponent to continue two out of every five times on this board right here. Oh, here's what probably is a good flop to bluff on. One of the things I recommend too is when you see a flop and you're doing this kind of work, gauge first, like guess a percentage. How often do you think the flop hits this board? This one in particular, let's run the queen five three rainbow. Before I run it, my guess is this player's range will hit roughly 22% with top pair or better and open-ended or better. 22% is my guess, queen five three. Uh, 
Let's see here, removing those. Ooh, 17%. I was wrong. This is even better board to be bluffing on. If this actually hit 22%, I would absolutely bluff on the queen 5-3. But this player's range only hit 16.8%. Top pair better and open enders. Absolutely, I'm C-bet bluffing on the queen 5-3 board. So that was the second way to do some flop analysis. The third way is using my range and flop interaction spreadsheet. Now I'm going to demonstrate it for those on YouTube right now. But you can get this sheet for yourself by going to the show notes page, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod415. So here is what the sheet looks like over here. You can see I have a sample calling range, a 10% calling range consisting of 136 combos. And there's the range breakdown with a little screenshot of what the range looks like right here. What I recommend that you do is once you download this spreadsheet, copy the range text output, input it in by hitting control C and then control V right here. Bam, we now have the 10% range. And on the spreadsheet, I actually give you some various flop textures that kind of cover the gamut of the basic kind of flops you'll see. You have the high and dry uh, ace nine deuce rainbow board. The one up, two down, king six four rainbow board. The chicken board, the 10 10 five rainbow board as well. The idea here is that you enter in opponent's calling range, which this is 10%, kind of a tighter range, right? But then enter in these different boards and then record how often they hit the various hand strengths. The first thing you want to do, um, and we're going to use the, let's do this, um, let's use the two up, one down board. Ace, queen, four, rainbow. So once you enter the 10% range, ace, queen, four. Now, this range hits top pair or better, plus the open enders, 32% of the time. And I generally just round to the nearest whole number. So we've got 32%, right? Uh, and then you enter that in into the spreadsheet. Top pair or better, let's deselect the open enders. And it hits top pair better. Oh, there's no open enders. It's just 32% of the time on this board right here. So you would fill that in 32%. Over here for open enders, zero. Because obviously, ace, queen, four, no open enders possible at this point. There are gut shots possible, though. The second column over here, this is where you enter in mid pair or better and gut shot combos. So let's add some mid pairs here and the gut shots. Now, if our opponent, they are, they are a tight pre-flop caller, but maybe they hate folding on flops and we think they'll continue with any gut shot and mid pair or better, they're actually continuing 52% of the time. So it's not necessarily a good board to be C-bet bluffing on because generally they don't like folding and their range hits uh, mid pair or better and gut shots 52% of the time. So once you download this range and flop interaction spreadsheet, you go... Um, uh, range by range. At the top, we have a 10% range where you're going to enter in all these various boards, record how often they hit the various hand strengths. Scroll down, we have a 20% range. And then scroll further down, we have a 50% range for you to be doing this Flopzilla Pro work. This is truly going to train you to understand flop, I'm sorry, range and flop interaction. And here's one of the great things, right? Let me show you on the screen right now for the YouTube viewers. I completed the 30% calling range sheet for you right here. This is great because if you have this open as you play and a random flop hits, queen, seven, nine, for example, take a look. Okay, what is the closest board to the queen, seven, nine? Well, that's like a one up, two down board, king, six, four. If my opponent's calling with a 30% range, they're only hitting 15% of the time. This is a great board to be bluffing on, assuming it's the queen seven nine, like I said, right? So you can utilize this sheet as you're playing to help you make more profitable C-bet bluffs to earn more pots. So before I get to today's action step, if you like what you saw today in using Flopzilla Pro to build your range and flop understanding, and if you wanna learn how to use Flopzilla Pro even more, get my course, Flopzilla Pro Course. You can learn it the easy way with this course. 3.75 hours of do-as-you-consume instruction, and you're gonna be guided step-by-step -step in using Flopzilla Pro to build your skills and earn 
more profits. To get this for yourself, go to smartpokerstudy.com slash Flopzilla Pro Course. And I want to thank all my recent um, uh, uh, audience members who've purchased this course from me. Now let's take action. Spend three sessions studying flops with Flopzilla Pro this weekend. On Friday, complete the 10%, 20%, and 50% spreadsheets in the range and flop interaction spreadsheet. Get that once again, smartpokerstudy.com slash pod 415. On Saturday, use actual flops that you've seen. Enter in a calling range, actual flops. See how often or how well each of those ranges interact with the flop. And then Sunday, do the same thing. Enter in calling ranges. Use random flops this time. If you enjoyed this video, please slap a like on it and leave a comment. If you don't know what comment to say, hey, just tell me the most useful thing that you learned from the video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.